Welcome everyone to our second annual spring virtual conference. I am Rachel Altum, the online community manager for the Gypsy Nurse, and I am here on our second to last session. I'm so sad. It's been going so well, and um, it's going to go even better in these next two sessions. We want to thank Travel Nurse Across America for being this year's uh, spring virtual conference sponsor, so thank you so much. This year's theme is Peaks and Valleys of travel nursing, which you guys have been through some peaks and definitely through some valleys. So um, we really want to show that within our whole conference. So um, you all deserve, you know, all the thanks, all of the hard work that you've done should be recognized. And, um, you know, we're always here to recognize it. Um, now we are going to be giving a giveaway um, for the next couple of sessions too. Um, each giveaway will have a $50 Amazon gift card or a Gypsy Nurse Tumblr with a $25 Starbucks gift card to anyone who registers for any events. I know we only have two left, but mm. that's okay. You can still register. You get more information about that. And then if you comment, ask questions, um, you'll be entered to win a $100 Amazon gift card or a $150 Amazon gift card. So um, two people will be winning. If you comment on any of the sessions today, you'll be entered in that giveaway. Yesterday's winners were Christina Bernal, Jamie Giard, sorry if I said it wrong, and Joanne Hart. If you can't attend all the sessions, you know, like I said, please still register. Um, you'll be entered um, to win that giveaway. Um, you will need to be a registered member on the gypsynurse.com to rewatch any of these sessions or share them with your friends, which we highly recommend to do. So um, go ahead and do that. And if you're not a registered member, I'm just wondering why not yet. Why um, not? Yeah, we have so many benefits on there. You can get um, CEs from Elite Learning, access on-demand events like this one, um, all of our other virtual conferences. You can watch those, set up content, job, and event alerts, connect and communicate with other travel nurses. So be sure to get on there. And we'll be having some really fun events coming up for Nurses Week. And I kind of want to give you a sneak peek of our official Nurses Week t-shirt. It's not in our Gypsy Nurse store yet, which we do have a store. Um, you can get my little my sweater there. <laughs> but this will be in our store coming soon for Nurses Week. So we'll have it up there a little early so that way you can get it for your Nurses Week. And if you can't see what it says it says, don't call me a hero and then throw me a pizza party, which I'm sure most of you can relate. That's so, going to resonate in the community, yeah. Rachel. That is going to be a collector's item, I think. Definitely. So be on the lookout for that. Become a registered member and you'll be able to get more information on when that will come out. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this over to Steve. He has a few words to say. Hey again, Rachel, and I, I'm just doing the math. You said there's two uh, Gypsy Nurse backpacks left? Yes. Okay. Well, you, one person will win a $150 Amazon gift card, or, and then another person can either win the backpack or a $100 Amazon gift card. So it's I their choice. I just want to make sure that if there's two that – one of those is for me, but we'll we'll talk after. We'll talk later. So we'll wait till your birthday. Ah, oh, okay. All right. All right. I'll pin over here and then buy you one for your birthday. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's great. The between the t-shirt and the gypsy nurse backpack, there's some there's some great gear there. But uh, great to see you. And yes, this is number this is uh, number eight of nine of our virtual conference sessions. So um, I'm very excited about this upcoming session. And I'd just like to welcome everybody, particularly those. We've got a lot of people that have joined us for almost all the sessions. So thank you, everybody, for being loyal and checking back in with us. And I hope you've had a, a great time. We certainly have had a great time uh, through these past sessions. But welcome, everybody, to the uh, Gypsy Nurse Virtual Spring Conference 2022. My name is Steve Curtin. I'm the CEO of the Gypsy Nurse. And it's a, really a privilege to uh, be with all of you guys today. Um, a couple of notes from me. Number one, um, I do want to thank all the travel nurses out there and all the travel healthcare professionals out there for all that you do for us and, and, and all that you have done. Uh, as Rachel said, the theme of our conference is the peaks and valleys of travel nursing. And I don't have to explain how many peaks and valleys that uh, so many of you have gone through. Uh, it's really been a tough couple of years. We're basically marking the two-year anniversary of the pandemic. 
hopefully we are um, moving into a better place in the world. Um, but uh, we really need to recognize all of you who have been on the front lines the past two years, um, helping keep all of us safe and, and healthy. So thank you for all that you've done. Um, secondarily, I would like to thank our sponsor for the conference, and that's Travel Nurse Across America. Uh, Travel Nurse Across America is a sponsor of the Gypsy Nurse, and they're a great company to work with, a great sponsor. If you're interested in working with Travel Nurse Across America, they've got some fantastic jobs posted on our site. You can just go to our job board on the gypsynurse.com uh, and search under uh, Travel Nurse Across America. You can filter uh, based on that, and all of their jobs will show up. So we would encourage you to do that, or certainly you can go to their website uh, for Travel Nurse Across America. Um, finally, I do want to mention a little bit of a public service announcement, but um, we have just recently concluded a uh, study and a market research survey with a third, park, uh, third party market research firm um, on uh, travel nursing. So we have surveyed and have over, uh, over a thousand completed surveys from travel nurses uh, across the country about their experiences and attitudes and their, and their thoughts in the future regarding travel nursing. Um, the third party market research firm uh, is compiling all of that data and we will be publishing that in a publicly available report at the end of May. So the report will be called The Voice of Travel Nursing. I don't think there's going to be anything that has been done like this in, in, uh, in the travel nursing community before. Uh, we thank all of those uh, thousand plus nurses that participated. We look forward to sharing that data uh, with the public uh, and with the media. And our hope is that it will shed some insight into helping to make uh, the overall um, healthcare platform uh, for the U.S. a better place going forward. So thank you for everyone that participated. We'll keep everybody in the loop on that, but we're excited to uh, release that to the public later in May. So with that, Rachel, I'll turn it back over to you and you can introduce our guests. Definitely. Thank you. Yes, we have Chief Nursing Officer Earl Dalton and owner of Coast Medical Service, Kenny uh, Kadar, and they are here to unravel the roles and dynamics between nurses and recruiters. So please welcome Earl and Kenny. Hi guys. Hey guys, thank you so much for joining hey. us. Thank you for having us. Yeah, definitely. I'll let you guys. Great. Thank you so much for, for having us. Uh, really an honor to be here uh, talking about the peaks and, and valleys of travel nursing. You know, our, our goal for today is to discuss navigating the nurse and recruiter dynamic yeah. and hopefully make that dynamic a peak experience uh, for, for you and, and for the companies that you work for. It's not um, like uh, Earl and Kenny. It's not like the nurse recruiter dynamic isn't an important part of travel nurse staffing, is it? Right? <laughs> no, no, no. It's a very yeah, minor and frankly, part. This can be the key key relationship and, and key driver in really having a peak experience. And so, hopefully, you know, some of the information we share today will will help um, uh, with that. Perfect. Um, so, in terms of you know what to expect from us today, first we're just going to introduce ourselves, get to know myself, Earl, a little better. We're also both members of an organization called Nathos, so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, then dive, dive in deeper into navigating the nurse and recruiter dynamic, you know, really looking at the role of the recruiter, you know, what makes a good recruiter, what recruiters look for, red flags, uh, the role of the nurse in that relationship, and, and the same things, you know, what recruiters look for, um, you know, what, what makes a good, a good candidate, you know, for a recruiter and, and red flags that they look for, and then ultimately what the ideal relationship, finding that peak, so to speak, you know, keeping on theme with the conference. Uh, and then discuss some clinical support that travelers can get. Earl can speak in much in much greater detail to that. Uh, and then lastly, Q&A, go over any questions you have about anything in this presentation or, you know, anything else that you may have on your mind related to the nurse recruiter dynamic. We're happy to add any insight there. Um, so first wanted to discuss NATHO. Um, NATHO is a nonprofit association. Um, it's formed to promote the ethical business practices in, in healthcare, in the healthcare industry, or excuse me, travel healthcare industry. Um, the goal of NATHO is to really to set the gold standard for companies in the industry. Earl and I both work at travel healthcare organizations. We're both members of NATHO. As part of that, we really do set to, strive to set high standards for the industry. Um, and encourage uniformity and, and cooperation among the industry. Like, this is not a zero sum game. You know, companies in the industry do collaborate to try to make for the best experience for the industry as a whole. You know, members in NATO are all travel healthcare companies. They all have these same high standards. And NATO makes specific contributions related to education, related to sharing of resources, as I discussed, 
and also offers a formal resolution process should issues escalate and you know further assistance from from a higher level source is needed nato is, is happy to to serve that uh, it's a really important organization to really set the tone for the industry uh, and generally speaking members of nato do uphold the highest standards in the industry all are joint commission certified uh, and you know all are of, of the highest ethical and and moral standard um, with that said i want to turn it over to, to earl to introduce himself and his company Thanks for that, Kenny, and uh, and certainly let me start with uh, with the Gypsy Group here, who've put just an incredibly thoughtful uh, you know a couple of days together here, and uh, uh, it's been a it's been a pleasure to get a chance to work with them and watch them grow, and uh, and uh, thanks to you as well, Kenny, uh, that this was a tremendous uh, opportunity, and uh, and you've done a great job in pulling together this uh, presentation for us today. Um, I am the Chief Nurse Officer for Health Carousel, and, uh, and I thought I would open just with sharing a little bit more about who we are. And so, Kenny, if you'll go to the next slide. Thank you, sir. Um, uh, really, Health Carousel. Which one? Which one? Is, Sorry. Oh, this come one, on, yes. Kenny. You got to get get your act together, or uh, you know, guys over there at Gypsy, they're gonna they're gonna get on you, bud. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so we, Health Carousel is is a collection of uh, of divisions uh, that really do service right across the spectrum of healthcare. Um, delivery uh, in terms of hospital facilities and, and the delivery of healthcare, right? So, uh, so we have an international healthcare division um, whereby uh, we uh, recruit nurses from over 62 different countries that come into the United States and help out. Um, this has been a wonderful uh, solution as it uh, certainly applies to rural settings, et cetera, places that uh, uh, really do have some struggles when it, when it comes to, um, uh, to getting healthcare professionals. Um, we do partner with organizations around how to, how should I think about perm staff versus part time staff versus uh, you know sort of contingent staff right in which travel nursing falls under those buckets um, and so we certainly do offer advice to places who need some help to sort of straighten those things out in their heads. Um, we do have a large uh, uh, travel nurse division uh, in every way um, you know what I call our domestic uh, travel division in which. Uh, uh, right, um, most nurses in the United States who are familiar with travel and traditional travel, uh, that's where they fall. Uh, we do have an allied uh, growing division for sure, right? As, uh, as uh, with all things, uh, there are certainly uh, some crisis points there as well and, uh, and the need uh, for, uh, for allied professionals. And then a locum tenants group, which is uh, essentially for us doctors, NPs and PAs. Uh, so travel doctors, travel NPs, uh, travel uh, PAs and uh, certainly a growing need and lots of niches for them as well. Um, Kenny, next uh, next slide, please. Thank you, sir. Um, and uh, and then just a little bit about me. Uh, right now, I, uh, I've had the privilege of being the uh, CNO here at Health Carousel now since about 2016, uh, and really have brought sort of a nurse's eye to uh, to this travel company. Um, and uh, for me, I, I certainly have a, a fair amount of uh, ADD, so I like to be busy. I've been a nurse. Uh, for about 26 years now, I am on the Joint Commission uh, Staffing Advisory Council, which is, advises uh, at a national level uh, the staffing standards uh, for uh, for the United States. Um, I'm a member of the uh, of the uh, American Staffing Association Healthcare Section, uh, again an advocacy and education group uh, here in the country, and I certainly um, offer some uh, some opinion there. Uh, I am on the NATO board uh, that uh, that Kenny alluded to a little earlier. I mean, Kenny served together on the board of directors there. Um, and as another function of that group, I'm also the clinical um, executive committee liaison. Uh, we have uh, a CNO such, uh, such as myself uh, in a group there um, that, uh, that uh, convene and uh, we share best practices from around the industry uh, that really aid nurses, nurses and the clinical folk uh, and uh, I'm at this uh, part of the um, of the industry, um, and so uh, you know I often think about NATO as a advocacy and educational group, right? If uh, uh, if it wasn't for these folks, then who would speak for this sector of the industry, so to speak, uh, right? And so uh, NATO does a tremendous job of uh, being able to do that. Um, due due to uh, do the nature of our work, I get a chance to uh, to move all around the world and uh, and do presentations like these, and I get a chance to meet nurses. Uh, really from all over the world. And uh, I can tell you that the one thing that strikes me the most uh, is uh, from uh, every corner of the globe I've been. And so I've been in the Philippines, Saudi Arabia, South Korea, uh, UAE and Abu Dhabi and uh, all of those places. Uh, I'm always struck by uh, the, the unity in the uh, purpose for nursing, uh, right? Nursing around the world um, has concern for their patient. 
Um, many of us got into the game due to a calling, a, a need to serve. Um, and, uh, and those things ring through all over the world, right? And, uh, uh, and despite what may seem like exterior differences uh, everywhere I go, um, uh, essentially we're all the same underneath our skin, right? And uh, so patients have the same fears. Uh, nurses essentially have the same struggles uh, no matter where you go in the world. Um, and so it's, uh, it's been an honor and a privilege uh, since 2016 to get a chance to uh, uh, shake the hand and get to meet a lot of nurses uh, around the globe. Uh, Kenny, over to you, yeah. next slide. Yeah, thanks Earl, uh, impressive stuff and honored to serve on the board with you of NAFO. Uh, so a little bit more about uh, Coast Medical Service, my company, we're a family owned healthcare staffing agency, been around since 1979. So the company was actually founded by my mom in 1979. Uh, I grew up with the business. It was historically like per diem staffing in SoCal, uh, Southern California, Los Angeles specifically. You know, nurses come into our door applying uh, in a paper application in our living room, picking up checks from our front doormat, things like that. So, you know, came from those beginnings. I took over uh, 10 years ago. Uh, we've grown quite a bit since then and really been able to help a whole lot of people uh, in that time. So really proud of the work we've been able to do. Uh, Coast is Joint Commission certified. We're NATO, uh, also members of NATO. Um, you know, focus on you know per diem and travel nursing worldwide. Uh, we our mission is really to provide quality service to make it easier for healthcare providers to focus on patients. You know, ultimately that's our goal to find wins, to find you know a good a good fit for a clinician, find the right clinician for the facility, and find the right clinician for the patient. And if we're successful at doing that, then everybody gets, you know, everybody wins and, and our company also is successful as well. And that's kind of what we're all about. Our culture is really collaborative. We're resilient, no ego. Like we're kind of like a, we call ourselves a 43 year old startup. The best idea wins, you know, whoever's idea it may be, whether it be a clinician who has a suggestion for improvement or myself or a member of our compliance team, you know, we, we really um, seek out good ideas and seek to make uh, continued improvements. Um, and we're really a solutions oriented service and, and looking to improve every day. Uh, so that's just a little bit more about the company, a little bit more about me. As I mentioned, I was born into this industry. I've known it my whole life. Uh, I've been the president and owner of the company for 10 years, uh, member of the, the board of directors of NATO, proud to serve with Earl and, and uh, some very other impressive uh, professionals from our industry. Uh, I'm also a partner in a COVID testing company. So, you know, when the pandemic hit, uh, I'm in Los Angeles. Our city got, got hit very hard, like others, partnered with some folks to do COVID testing um, and actually continue to do that throughout Los Angeles charter schools. Uh, so helping, you know, our student population uh, continue their education in a safe environment. So it feels really good to be able to contribute in that way as well. Uh, and just personally, I live, you know, in Hermosa Beach, married, Two kids, one on the way. My wife is due Cinco de Mayo, so it could happen during this call. Who knows? Uh, and uh, two dogs. Uh, so that's just a little bit more about me. Um, so now you know about more about you know Nathan, more about Earl and Healthcare SL, more about myself and Coast. Let's get into the meat of this. You know, the navigating the nurse and recruiter dynamic. Uh, to start, I have a question for for you all. What do nurses have in common with Tom Brady? Share your answers in the comments. I'd love to read some out. If we have anybody, I'll give you a minute. Can we get the Jeopardy music to play as we wait? All right. I can verbally guess, Kenny, but I don't, I don't think I'll be eligible for a prize. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> I don't know if there's any gift cards associated. Perseverance, Christina Bernal, agree. Team Flair, agree. Lisa Garrison, thank you. We both want to work away from home and stay away from our kids. <laughs> That is a well, good one. Gina. That could be the comment of the uh, the comment of the conference. There, sign Gina yeah. up for something, Rachel. We yeah, gotta get her yeah. Something. When you when you know, you know. <laughs> Sometimes getting tackled. These are really good. <laughs> All right. Well, those are some good ones. If you want to keep sharing, I'll share some of the stuff that I thought of. Um, you know, uh, an inspiration to society, considered a hero by many. You know, a lot of people look up to athletes. And I think especially over the last couple of years, you know, people have really looked up to all clinicians for the work that's been done. Um, you know, I think 
nurses, you know, have been an inspiration for our, our society, nation, or worldwide, as Earl mentioned, you know, that mentality that, you know, a willingness to, to help and get in the trenches as, uh, as, as you guys said, is, is really inspirational for our society. Uh, comes through in the clutch. You know, when you really need some medical help, you trust a nurse. The nurse is there for you. You know, they're at your bedside. I mentioned we're having, you know, a child soon. The, the L&D nurse that will be with us will be like part of our family, you know, and you want that person to come through in the clutch for you. Um, the career, it's demanding, it's challenging, and it's rewarding. You know, anything in life that is is rewarding comes with its challenges. You know, we, we can certainly acknowledge that the healthcare profession, nursing in specific, comes with quite a bit of challenges. It's very demanding. But when you get that good patient result, when you have that good rapport with a patient, it is very, very rewarding experience. Um, in high demand with many opportunities to choose from, I think that's been the case, you know, now more than ever. There are a lot of opportunities for nurses um, and, and the, the, the field is in high demand. And as a result of that, there's an industry of companies dedicated to helping you as nurses navigate your career. And that's where companies like Coast and like Health Carousel and the other NATO members, you know, come into play to help you do that. So let's talk a little bit more about how we can do that and then the role of the recruiter in the nurse relationship. You know, really look at the recruiter as your agent, your advisor, your partner. You know, they're an industry and market expert. You know, you're with patients all day. They're looking at jobs all day. Like they know what geographies have the highest need. They know what specialties have, you know, the highest need and what the rates are for those. You know, they're doing this day in and day out. They are a market expert and, and leveraging that expertise is very powerful uh, for a nurse. Um, the recruiters really, role is to build a relationship with you. They, they should get to know your needs, like understand why you're doing this, what you want out of this opportunity, out of the opportunities that they can present for you, and ultimately find a way to deliver for you. And, and with that, they, they should set realistic expectations. You know, there are all sorts of fluff out there, but really a recruiter's job is to say, hey, this is realistic and this is what we can do and, and deliver on it. Um, they should be your point of contact throughout your career, like finding out what your goals are and helping you navigate every step of the way. And, and for different people, it's different things. For different people, there's there's different, um, you know, priorities and, and things that, that are important to them and, and they're willing to give on some things and less on others. And it's, you know, really the recruiter's role to understand those things and, and help you navigate through them. Um, what to look for in a good recruiter. So we talked about understanding your goals and requirements for assignments, but here are some specifics related to that. You know, really they should understand what's your reason for wanting to be a traveler in the first place? You know, why are you doing this? Is it you're looking to explore, you know, the, the country? Is there a specific geography that you're looking for? You know, are you, um, you know, just looking to get different diverse experience? Um, is there a specific type of facility or specific facilities in, in general that you're kind of interested in? You know, those are all good knowledge points for a recruiter to help you find what you're looking for. Um, you know, timing is really key, you know, understanding when you're looking to do this, you know, and, and setting realistic expectations about it. You know, oftentimes, you know, from initial conversation to actually starting an assignment, it can take several weeks. You know, if somebody's saying, I need to start tomorrow, it's like, well, hey, let's set a realistic expectation of what a start date can look like. And maybe here are some opportunities if you're really looking to start quicker, that might be a quicker start, even it may not meet on some of the other, you know, touch points that are important to you. And, and also like, hey, I'm not looking to do this for a year. It's like, okay, well, let's build a relationship. Let's understand what you want. But also, you know, we might be a little bit early to be getting into the weeds on the specific assignments available to you as well. Um, location, you know, what locations work for you? Where do you have a license to, to, to practice? And if you don't have a license, you know, what's the process for that? You know, if you have a timing co constraint, and you want to work in California, my home, my home state, it may take you some time to get that license. So, you know, want to be realistic about, you know, the locations you want, but what the timing could be and what the steps that would need to happen to, to actually make it happen for you. Um, you know, unit expectations, you know, where do you have experience? Where are you looking to get experience? 
you know, what's realistic based on the different options that may be in terms of what they are looking for in a clinician. And Earl can speak more specifically to this, you know, in his slides, but, you know, making sure there's a good clinical fit and we put you in a position that advances your career, but also put to yourself um, the facility and the patient in a, in a position to be successful as well. You know, shift time is another big one. You know, are you a day person? Are you a night person? Are you a mid person? Do you, are you open to both? You know, there, th that can really impact the opportunities available um, and, and the, the different, um, the different ways the recruiter may approach and, and you may want to approach your relationship with, with that person. Facility type is another one. You know, what type of facilities do you have experience with, with and are looking to work in? You know, is it long-term care specific? Is it trauma one facilities? Um, those things, you know, will, will impact, you know, what, what, what can be done, but also where you want to be. Um, and lastly, you know, pay expectations. You know, what, what compensation are you looking for? You know, what would, would make you feel valued and happy in the assignment? And you'll notice, I know pay is a big thing that, you know, goes out in the industry and you see on, you know, marketing sites, here's the pay. And I think that's very important, but notice we didn't put at the top because a lot of this stuff matters as much if, if not more. And it's really critical, you know, for a good recruiter to identify what's important to you, recognizing that all of these things are important. Some may be more important than others, but a good recruiter will really recognize and understand these things and get to know what you're looking for so that they can effectively deliver for you. Building on what to look for in a good recruiter. They really should get to know you on a personal level and on a professional level. I detailed some of the details for that in the previous slide, but like, who are you as a person? Who are you going to be traveling with? Are you solo? Do you have a dog or a, a cat? Do you have a boyfriend? Do you have kids? You know, what, what does that situation look like? Um, you know, and, and again, re recognizing and understanding what your professional goals are as well through this. Um, through that understanding, they should be able to pre present opportunities that they have available that will be a strong fit for you. And, you know, we like to do it at Coast is try to find something that meets all those things, but say like, hey, here's the opportunity. Here are the things that we discussed that you want. Here's what this offers that you want. Maybe here's some things it may not have, you know, and then what do you think? Like, is that a good fit for you? If it is, you know, let's talk about next steps. If it's not, why? Like, what is a is a is a deal breaker for you in this case? You know, okay, that's a deal breaker. Okay, what about this opportunity that meets that demand? And really, like, go through different options to try to find things that will be a, a good fit. Um, you know, for the clinician and ultimately for the facility and for the company as well. Um, ideally, you know, they can find that good fit through those discussions and facilitate getting you that job offer you know, making sure you have all, all the deal points that are important to you from a timing perspective, from a unit perspective, from a timing perspective, from a pay perspective, all the stuff we discussed in our previous slide, um, then set you up for compliance, make sure that we have, that all the documentation required by the client can be completed and timely, uh, and any other logistics related to getting to the assignment, whether it be travel logistics, uh, you know, your, um, your lodging, um, Anything else related to actually, you know, getting to that assignment and setting it up for success there. Um, communication is really key in this. You know, the recruiter should communicate in a fashion that works for you. You know, one of the things we like to say here is, you know, a nurse often works 12 hours a day. You know, they probably sleep eight hours if we're, if we're being generous. And now they got four other hours. And those four other hours may not be like a nine to five that, you know, a, a typical you know, um, white collar worker may work. And so, you know, we want to be amenable to what makes sense for us and also for the clinician. You know, we recognize sometimes that may mean an early morning or a later at night phone call. You know, we recognize sometimes, you know, text message is more effective, sometimes phone calls more effective, but ultimately a recruiter, you know, should have a good cadence that works for you. Everybody's different. Some people really like email, you know, I mean, whatever is effective for you, I think a good recruiter will recognize that and be able to communicate in a fashion that's effective for you, but also that ultimately um, provides the, the clarity that is necessary for a successful relationship. You know, what more to look for in a good recruiter? Someone that genuinely wants you to be successful and they provide meaningful insights to help guide you to where you want to go. Sometimes I'm good at, I'm big at analogies. We kind of call it like the college advisor. You know, everybody in high school has that college advisor. Like what's like the best fit for you? You know, we like to say like, sometimes everybody says, I'd like to go to Harvard, but like, is Harvard the best fit? Like truly, like if we're being honest with ourselves, like 
and then okay if that is like what are the criteria to get into harvard and, and is that realistic you know that's that's really the role of the recruiter to be that advisor you know to to understand what you want to, to but to also provide meaningful and realistic feedback and insights into if those are your goals here's what it's going to take to get there and you know have that trusting relationship back and forth that that feedback can be do that that feedback can be delivered and 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 really move forward the relationship. Um, and I think lastly, you know, setting realistic <laughs> expectations with the nurse, you know, and then delivering on those expectations throughout every experience in the in the company. So setting expectations related to you know what should happen related to the to the interview and job offer. Once the job offer is offered, what the expectations are related to compliance. You know what the expectations are related to timekeeping and payroll cadence and all of those things so that you know the nurse really understands what the relationship will look like and frankly that the company delivers on all of those things um so you know those are all things that you know we we want to deliver on as as good recruiters and that you know nurses can look for in, in things of a good recruiter um, what are some red flags you know someone that doesn't build that relationship someone that gets on the phones like Hey, how are you? I got this assignment that pays this. Can I sign you up? Like, is that person really interested in in your well being, in your you know career, or are they just interested in making a deal? You know, probably the latter. You know, it's really helpful, I think, for for that relationship to to, to blossom because that's really how um, you can get the most value out of the recruiter. Um, you know, somebody who doesn't care about your goals or your career, is that somebody you really want placing you in jobs? You know, somebody who doesn't invest in you. We talked a lot about good communication, but bad communication is definitely a red flag. You know, dishonesty, false promises saying, hey, I'm going to do this for you by this time and doesn't do it by that time. Like that doesn't feel good, right? Ghosting, you know, I'm, I'm going to get back to you and then never get back to you. You know, I mean, that, that doesn't feel good on a per personal relationship. It certainly doesn't feel good on a professional relationship. You know, if somebody's doing that to you on a professional relationship, is that really somebody that you're going to want to work with, that you're going to trust to maybe travel to a new city and expect them to support you? You know, probably not. Uh, lack of transparency, you know, not disclosing things that may be critical. You know, we talked about compliance um, expectations. You know, that's been a, a continues to be a, um, something that that where the requirements continue to increase every year in terms of clients requesting more documentation, you know, from clinical staff in order to work there, and you know, not being transparent about what's going to be required to become compliant at a facility, you know, is not is is a red flag. That's not something that's going to be conducive for your success for you to meet your goals. You know, somebody that sets unrealistic expectations that says you want a job tomorrow, I can get you to the city tomorrow, and you're going to start. I mean, I guess there are on occasion those opportunities, but it's it's really not generally realistic to do that. And somebody that kind of promises the moon is really setting themselves up to fail. And I think, you know, that's definitely a red flag for me in any any relationship I work for. And you know, somebody who's like rude, you know, you, you want to work with pleasant people. People are supportive, helpful, understanding of your feedback. You know, if they present something and you, you know, an opportunity and you may disagree or not like it, you know, they should be accepting of that and really more using that as an opportunity to get to know you better as opposed to like, well, you don't know what you're talking about or, you know, saying, you know, offhand comments like that, you know, that's really not conducive for a good relationship. Um, and, and last and, and certainly not least, but of the ones, you know, we've identified here is, is the hard sell, you know, take this job or I'm not going to work with you or you're never going to work in this town again or, you know, that sort of vibe, you know, that, that just isn't conducive for a good relationship. You know, I think a recruiter can be an advisor and say, Hey, this opportunity, based on what we've said and what we've gone through, feels like the best fit. And it feels like this is what you should heavily consider. But if you don't want to, we under, I also understand, but I want to use this as an opportunity to find that opportunity that is going to match with your requirements. Um, and I think, you know, if you avoid these things and look for the things we, we mentioned, I think you'll, you'll find yourself with a, a good recruiter that will be that advisor that, that will be helpful for you in your career. Now, while recruiters also, you know, uh, or nurses have things to look for in recruiters and, and red flags, you know, similarly, recruiters really do the same. And, you know, here's kind of how we see the role of the nurse or the clinician in the relationship. You know, first, it's really understanding, you know, what requirements are important to you. So all those things recruiters should get to know um, are, are things that, you know, are important for you to have some awareness of for yourself. You know, what locations do you want to work at? What timing do you have? 
what times of shift are, are you looking for? Will you be willing to do a night shift if you're day shift or vice versa? You know, what types of facilities do you have experience in or do you, are you looking for experience in, in, in? You know, what compensation are, are you looking for? And I think, you know, there's recognition that you may not totally know all these things, but you should be transparent about your pre preferences and keep an open mind about like what the options may be. You know, because you may find, you know, and this is a recruiter job that you may have your mindset on something, but they can totally blow your mind with something you weren't even considering that may even meet more of your, you know, criteria or expectations than you even thought of. So I think, you know, the expectation is like to have an understanding of these things and to really, to really be transparent about them and share with them, not hide what you're looking for. You know, a recruiter doesn't want to waste their time understanding these things, present you something, and then, you know, totally disagree with all the renege on all the previous things that were discussed, you know, in, in the actual pre presentation of the assignment. And there's recognition that some of these things may come up, but like a wild fluctuation makes it feel like, man, is this person, is this person serious? Do they really want to do this? Do they really know what they want? You know, the recruiter is looking for somebody who's willing to build the relationship, you know, not just starting off the conversations with, can you pay me, you know, X amount starting tomorrow? It's like, well, hey, what are your broader goals? Like, we get it. Those are goals that you want. But what else is important to you? You know, what is important to your relationship? What are you trying to achieve here? You know, we're, recruiters look for, for nurses that are willing to, to build the relationship, or at least good recruiters are. Um, and, you know, looking for somebody that's responsive, you know, willing to meet, you know, submission, compliance requirements, understanding of what the process is like, and, you know, accepting of, of what, you know, the, the expectations are willingness to, to complete those. You know, ultimately, it's a partnership, and it's a two-way street. And, you know, the nurse is relying on, on the uh, recruiter to, to help them find the, the right, you know, fit. And the recruiter is also uh, uh, reliant on the nurse to, to do the things that they need to do to, to get that assignment and, and to get there and show up and, and end up, you know, providing quality care for, for the the uh, patient at the end of the day. Um, more, you know, on what recruiters look for, you know, getting to know you on a personal professional level we talked about, invested in the relationship, frankly, looking for people who are pleasant to work with. Like at the end of the day, we spend, a, recruiters spend a lot of time with a nurse and the nurse spends a lot of time with the recruiter. You know, they want to work with people they want to work with just, you know, on both sides. And so, you know, that pleasantness is really key. You know, timely and transparent feedback on, on assignment options. Um, responsive, you know, and eager to find the right assignment and complete the compliance. Somebody who will set realistic expectations too. Like if we say, hey, can you get back to us by the end of day tomorrow on this, you know, and you say yes, the expectation of the nurse side is that it'll happen. Similarly is the expectation that we'll do that for you. You know, we want on both sides to set those expectations and deliver. It's, it's kind of an inverse of each other. If you notice these slides, it's, it's a lot of the same things. We're looking for the same things in each other in a lot of ways. You know, somebody who's professional, polite and collaborative, and ultimately someone that will represent, you know, that recruiter, the agent and the agency well on assignment and take care of the patient in the fashion that the patient deserves. You know, recruiters are looking for all these things in their conversations as, as well. You know, and I know that we have recruiters who will say, hey, look, this isn't the right fit for me. This person isn't interested in some of these things. And that's OK that, that there are times where there aren't good fits. But, you know, this is the things that, you know, good recruiters look for. Uh, some of the red flags, you know, someone who doesn't build relationship with you. We talked a lot about relationship. I really think that that's what it's all about. It's a partnership here. And, you know, all these things that we're discussing are really, you know, um, um, parts of building a good relationship. Um, communication is key on both ends, you know, challenging communication with dishonesty, with ghosting, with lack of transparency, with rudeness, resistance, all the stuff that, you know, the nurses are looking for recruiters, recruiters, same thing. These are red flags for, for a recruiter. Um, and, and lastly, unrealistic expectations, you know, unwilling to work, acknowledge market conditions, hung up on a Facebook post that was seen three months ago in passing with something that probably isn't real. You know, there's a lot of fluff out there. And, you know, the recruiter's role is to try to cut through that and, and, and share, you know, what's real. And if they feel like, uh, you know, somebody that they're working with is, is maybe not living in the same universe as them, they, they aren't going to like that. That's a red flag for them. Um, so, you know, a lot of similarities in terms of what to look for and red flags between nurses and recruiters. Um, now let's talk about, you know, the ideal relationship. You know, ultimately, it's a mutually beneficial partnership where everybody wins. You know, the nurse should be able to advance their career in an assignment that meets their needs, you know, and 
that that's a key key aspect. You know, those needs need to be met, and a good recruiter is able to find a way to meet them. Um, the client gets the clinical staff that they need. The patient gets the care that they deserve, and the recruiter and the agency are able to grow as a business. Like everybody truly wins. Like I, I suggested at the beginning, this is not a zero sum game. We're all in this together. We're all working towards, you know, providing quality care for patients. And a recruiter can really be impactful in empowering a nurse to do that. Um, and if they're able to do that, there should be a longstanding relationship, personally, a professionally, like a bond that strengthens over time. You know, and and I think in, in travel nursing, there's recognition that you know people become go from staff nurse to travel nurse and staff nurse and that sort of thing. But the bond can last forever, and ultimately, the work that has been accomplished has really been impactful for for our society. Uh, and lastly, you know, full trust and transparency by all. You know, recruiters want to trust in you and you want to trust in them and, and the company that they're working for. And I think if, if those things can be developed, you know, you can navigate the nurse and recruiter dynamics successfully. You can get all you want out of your nursing career. And, and conversely, the, the recruiter will be able to advance their career as well. And everybody wins. So, you know, that's kind of what we see as the ideal relationship. Um, and then lastly, you know, addressing issues, sometimes they come up, you know, should an issue occur, ideally you have that relationship with your recruiter and you can address it with them and they can, if they're not the right person, they can facilitate with the right person. You know, hey, you know, our, our, if it's a payroll issue, payroll handles that, here's, you know, Daniel's number, or, you know, I'll put you on a string with him or whatever. You know, hopefully that would be the case. If not, you can also, you know, escalate that to, to maybe the company management. And if that's not the case, that's where an external organization like NATO can come in. You know, NATO is um, set out with the goal of meeting high standards. And if a NATO, especially specifically a NATO member is not doing that, and you've really tried with your recruiter and the company not getting to where you need to be, there are organizations like NATO that can help contribute to you ultimately getting um, the answers, you know, that, that you're looking for. Um, so with that said, I'm going to kind of pass it on to Earl here to go over a little bit more uh, detail on the clinical side and beyond. So Earl, take it away. Thank you, Kenny. That, uh, that was a lot. And, uh, and I appreciate the folks uh, that are listening in um, uh, for sort of sticking with us here through about, uh, you know, 40 or so minutes of, uh, of content. Kenny, that was a really good job. Uh, you, you, you dove real deep there on the relationship uh, certainly from both sides, uh, right? Uh, what uh, expectations uh, are reasonable to expect of your staffing company and certainly uh, what the other side of that handshake looks like in terms of what the uh, healthcare professional's responsibility is as well, right? Because uh, we certainly are, uh, we certainly are that. Um, you know, as I think about um, about a nurse, right? I, I'd, love, I'd love to share a, a couple of things that I believe to be true, right? One, uh, if you think about it, uh, right? There's been a nurse in every society in one form or fashion that has ever been, uh, right? We have been around in, in some form or fashion, um, uh, right? Uh, it's in every society that has ever been. Um, and uh, for that reason, uh, right, we are integral to care, right? Uh, care in this country, right, that's certainly proven through the pandemic. Uh, care in this country uh, transacts through the hands of the nurse. Uh, right, uh, right. Uh, for all of the orders that are written and all of the things, right, uh, care actually happens uh, through the hands of a nurse, and um, and so uh, you know I can't think of a, of, uh, of anything more important in terms of healthcare delivery in the United States, and uh, you know through all of the governmental executive orders and all the things we saw uh, throughout the pandemic, boy did that play out, right? Um, uh, Kenny, next slide if you if, uh, if you don't mind. Um, and so um, you know. When I think about, uh, you know, certainly when I joined Health Carousel a while ago, and how would how would we influence uh, and improve the experience uh, for for nurses that are going on assignment? Um, I really think about it through uh, five phases of the assignment, uh, right? So one is uh, some hospital gives um, our company, right, a recruiting company, um, details about what kind of nurse they need, right? Um, it just turns out that a nurse sometimes hears that different than uh, other folks, right? And so uh, in many ways, I think about our role, uh, nursing's role inside of uh, staffing companies as a translator, uh, right? To help make sure that folks get it right. 
uh, right? Uh, what what we're looking for specifically, what ends up in the uh, you know in the uh, Facebook splash or whatever it is that's out there uh, that uh, is a learning nurses two jobs, uh, right? It's important to make sure that uh, that there's alignment between what what the hospital really needs. Um, and what uh, one is asking for, right? Turns out there's a place for a nurse in that, and that's uh, certainly some of what my team uh, deals with, right? So, uh, so we spend a lot of time on training recruiters, right? There's a lot of verbiage, there's a lot of acronyms, there's a lot of things that uh, nurses use that when they're talking to the recruiters, uh, they'll come to me, right? And they'll say, listen, I just, I don't understand uh, what this nurse is talking about, right? right? What is this witchcraft uh, in which they speak of, right? Uh, NG tubes and all of the things, right? In, in situ on, on we go, uh, right? Uh, and they don't know. And so, uh, so we're huge translators, uh, I think uh, it's probably one of our biggest roles uh, and, and certainly in this, right? So through uh, certainly the internal culture of health carousel, um, there's a big footprint on this through the nursing division within Health Carousel, the nurses that report to me as the CNO. Uh, we work very closely with the recruiting teams, uh, the uh, account management teams, that sort of thing, to make sure they're getting it right, right? To make sure you're heard correctly, to make sure that our hospital partners are heard correctly. Uh, and in that way, we help put a unique footprint, uh, you know, a, a unique uh, fingerprint um, that, uh, that what we ask for, we can get it right, uh, right? Um, then there, then you, you come over, right? There's assignment prep, right? Uh, nothing irritates me more than having a nurse go on assignment and they didn't understand the floating expectation. They didn't understand the full skill set, uh, right? Because somehow it got lost in translational translation along the way, right? People didn't understand uh, some of the terms that the hospital may have been using, et cetera, uh, right? And so uh, we, we've certainly, I think, provided some advantage and some um, um, some extra preparation in, in the health carousel uh, so that what is asked for is what is needed, right? And so um, certainly in health carousel's experience, right, I think we have a tremendously better um, uh, termination rate to the industry average termination rate, right? We're many magnitudes better than that. Um, and it comes from there's a lot of alignment, right? The nurses understand what they're about to get involved in, uh, and the hospitals understand what they're getting, uh, right? And in, uh, in, uh, it turns out there's a place for a nurse um, in that conversation. Um, and so that's certainly some of what we do, right? Uh, so if that sort of takes us up through, you know, empowering a culture, uh, sourcing candidates, um, right? Sort of assignment prep, right? What things do you need to make sure you have to go on an assignment and be successful? Uh, so now guess what, right? You parachute in, uh, right? Uh, it's certainly my belief. Uh, there's no reason why all sides don't fully enjoy the experience, right? Uh, the nurse should certainly feel like they've gone somewhere to help, that their uh, that their talents are appreciated, uh, right? That there's uh, there's some satisfaction in uh, in travel nursing, right? Uh, similarly, the hospital should feel like, oh my God, you know, thank God you're here, uh, right? What uh, what would we do without you, right? We're hurting for uh, for all of the reasons uh, that those things exist uh, today, and so certainly when folks are on assignment, right? Uh, we hear. Uh, really a couple of different pathways, I think, of communication, right? We'll hear from the nurse, uh, either about skills that they need because uh, it's tripping them up on their job, right? Whether it's interpretation of uh, tele strips, et cetera, right? Uh, so name, name a skill, right? Uh, uh, and so uh, we spend a lot of time, certainly on Carousel, uh, helping diagnose what is it in your skill set that is lacking uh, and how do we get you what you need, uh, right, to, to strengthen that, right? So we spend certainly some time there. Uh, there's certainly time spent on, hey, listen, I'm always the one that gets the admission, uh, right? I'm always the one uh, who, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, mistreated in some way and, you know, that sort of thing. So uh, a nurse can advocate for you uh, in a way where lots of folks can't, right? We, we get it, right? All of the folks uh, that do this kind of work have been in hospital operations and we understand how that part goes, uh, right? And, um, and then I would close on this, right, around uh, post assignment. Uh, right. Uh, so at some point, the assignment ends. Right. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you felt, uh, you know, in enriched by that experience. Uh, if it's not right, that's still important. Right. You're part of the travel industry. Uh, and in that sense, right, you're, you're still a sector of nursing that needs to be developed, uh, that needs to be heard, uh, that uh, that might, might might need improvement in your skill set. Might uh, you might have things that help improve a facility. Um, and so, again, I think these things can be heard by a clinician, by a nurse. Uh, in ways that uh, not necessarily everybody can. Uh, and so th those are things that uh, certainly consume a lot of my time. 
uh, and I certainly think about those uh, deeply. And, and, and we, we spend a lot of time adding process and procedure and those sorts of things uh, to these various components of, uh, of an assignment, uh, right, that, that a nurse may go on. Kenny, next slide, please. So, uh, so last slide here, folks. I, 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 we, you've done a great job of, uh, of uh, staying engaged all through this. I, I see lots of comments rolling in. I'm sure we'll get to, uh, to, to discuss those here in a minute. Uh, but I would leave you with right, just sort of uh, a sort of an infographic on what all of this means, right? So, um, so what this means for travel nurses? That certainly, right? If you interact with companies that have uh, you know some clinical competency internally within their company. Uh, that right, you're likely to get a company that uh, uh, right gets you precisely sourced uh, to uh, to the place uh, right for for what is needed right. They need uh, not just uh, an ED nurse right. It's an ED nurse with this sort of experience and this sort of uh, you know can run at this sort of pace of care. Uh, those sorts of things right. Um, I think that's important right. It, it means that uh, uh, right there's uh, generally a high amount of satisfaction. At least I I believe this in in the work that I get a chance to do. Uh, because the hospital knows what kind of nurse they're they're expecting um, and the healthcare professional right the nurse that's going understands what's going to be expected fully when they get there right because again there's a lot of translation of you know i hear the terms you're using but what do those things mean uh right there really uh, right and a, and a nurse uh, i think sort of understands that deeply um and then finally uh, right the, it leads to live high levels of engagement and ultimately that helps our patients uh, right when uh, when it's the right person at the right place for the right time, right uh, delivering the right pace of care with the right skill sets and that sort of thing, um, the person who wins and all of that, along with uh, right the relationship between the nurse and the hospital uh, patients, right communities get better served, uh, right. I always think about um, right pick pick a tragedy, uh, right. So we certainly have lots of those, right. Whether it's pandemic, whether it's uh, um, you know, natural disasters, whether it's, uh, you know, been some of the riots and things like that. Uh, ultimately, people end up in the hospital uh, and uh, and chances are uh, a travel nurse was right there to care for them. Right. We're a big sector uh, of the care delivery model. Um, and so, uh, you know, so making sure folks are aligned in, uh, and engaged in doing the right things uh, was uh, is uh, is incredibly important. Uh, so uh, that's all I wanted this year. Kenny, you can go to the last slide and, uh, and there's a big old thank you on there. I'm sure, uh, Kenny, I'm going to let you come back on and say thank you yeah. as well to our listenership yeah. here today. Uh, but uh, great job by, by you, Kenny, uh, going through all of this material. Great job by uh, Gypsy Nurse providing a conduit in which this sort of information can be shared. Uh, and I see a ton of questions in there. I'm going to turn it over to the group to see uh, well, what might be relevant there. And, uh, and uh, yeah. Kenny, you're happy to answer some questions. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Kenny, Earl, that was fantastic. I, I really think that that was a, a great um, overview in terms of how the dynamic should work, because it, it's obviously we were joking earlier, but it, it's the nurse recruiter dynamic is, is obviously totally key to how the whole travel nursing industry works. And then I think there are a lot of assumptions out there, a lot of um, uh, uninformed assumptions in turn, not only by people that are new to the industry, but also by people that have been around for a while and don't really know how it's supposed to work. I see a, um, I see a comment from, uh, it just popped up there a second. I want to make sure I have the right person here. Um, not sure I can see it, but basically it said, uh, you know, great overview. I didn't, I didn't know that yeah, here it is. This is so helpful. Larissa says, this is so helpful. I really thought it was normal to have a rude recruiter. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just, there yeah. you go, right? Uh, but it, it, it's, um, there are just so many assumptions. And, and sometimes I think people probably too get get locked into certain agencies, or certain recruiters, and they think, well, that's the way it should be done. And yet there are, there are, other, there are other options out there. But let me run through a few things here first. Um, uh, Lisa says, uh, great content. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, Sandra says, uh, great information. Thank you so much. Denise says, great presentation. Um, Larissa says, this is so helpful. Thank you. Uh, Christina says, that was very good content. Um, now we have some specific questions here. Um, Gina says, I've heard of a lot of nurses going for those types of agencies, those types I'm sure being perhaps promising the world, if you will and then being abandoned after they travel to the location. So Kenny, that kind of goes back to your point about talking a good game, over-promising, not delivering. If something doesn't sound right, it probably isn't right. Yeah. So it, there are that, always snake oil salesmen and everything, you know, and yeah. every industry has it. And there are some of those in, in what we do for sure. But 
you know, I think the goal here is like, what makes a good relationship is not that, of course, right? right. And it's it's easy to get, you know, eyes bright. Yeah, I'm going to win the jackpot when I, you know, pull the, the slot. And it could happen. Like, people win the car, but it's much more likely that, you know, it won't go your way, you know, in those cases. Yep. We've got, I'm going to kind of pull this all into one question because we've got a few comments here. But uh, several people commented about, nurses becoming recruiters and Kenny, I don't know. You've been in the business for a long time. I don't know how common that is. I've been in the business for a while, just, you know, relative to the overall travel nursing universe. And I don't see it as that common, but maybe it is. And, and so from there, they're asking, you know, is it, you know, it, perhaps it's easier for a um, a travel nurse to relate to an ex nurse who is a recruiter than a great recruiter that isn't a nurse. I'm kind of curious to get your guys' comment on that and your thoughts on that. Earl, as a nurse, I feel like you want to take this the stab first, or I'm happy. No, I, so I, I love how uh, I love how you just framed that up, right? Uh, I, I think people who have talent for this work can or cannot be a nurse. Uh, I think it's probably uh, a reasonable question as we move into 22 and beyond about does does the company have a clinical competency uh, or access to a clinical competency, uh, right? Because uh, you can get the both, best of both worlds. But uh, let me tell you, I, you know, I, I, for someone who spent uh, you know a long time sort of in the Duke University system in healthcare, uh -huh. uh, sh you know, shipping out to this, I've met some incredible people who uh, are recruiters and incredibly savvy, uh, right? That do this yeah. work, and so I don't know that the criteria needs to be out and out like a nurse is better. Um, but uh, but certainly maybe the question uh, you know do you have access to a to a clinical competency within the company uh, might be yeah. appropriate. I agree with that. I, I my first thought is like why is that important you know to you like what are you looking to gain from a nurse being the recruiter? You know at the end of the day, I think anybody who's been in healthcare, whether you're a clinician or a company servicing clinicians, can really relate in in a lot of different ways. And ultimately, I think it's more about the relationship and somebody who knows the market and the industry. Uh, and yes, you know, having, you know, a clinical background or, or having, I'm sorry, like clinical competency within the agency, I think is helpful. Yeah. But I, I, I personally don't necessarily think it, it, it impacts one way, shape or form. As long as the things that we discussed today are met, it, it really shouldn't matter whether that person has been a clinician or not. Agreed. Okay. Just guys, we only have a couple of minutes left. Just a, a, a couple of more questions here. In particular, uh, you know, Kenny, you talked about unrealis unrealistic expectations. Uh, obviously, over the last couple of years, um, rates have been extremely elevated, and and rightly so for the you know nurses putting themselves in harm way harm's way. Those yeah. rates, we're starting to see them coming down, and you know, quote unquote, normalize the the overall demand. In many respects, thankfully, is not what it was previously. Briefly, how do you reset expectations there? And are, are you finding it you know, more difficult to reset expectations? And how do recruiters kind of, um, if nurses are coming in with unrealistic, unrealistic expectations, they're asking for a certain amount of money and saying, well, that just doesn't exist anymore. How do you prevent those, those bad feelings? How, how do people get educated? Yeah, I mean, for us, I mean, transparency is key. You know, yeah. I mean, we want to first understand all the aspects of what somebody's looking for, you know, all the things we discussed, the location, the timing, all that. And then based on that, all we can do is present the opportunities that we have available, you know, and if, and if somebody is not receptive to that or, or is, is dead set on finding something better, we say, look, good luck to you. Like, I hope you can find it. It's just, we don't have that opportunity. Like there, we can't make it happen. Like we can't magically pull jobs with the rate that you want. Like we can present you what we have available that meets a lot of your criteria. And that's where the feedback comes in, you know, back and forth. It's like, well, you know, hey, I was expecting this type of rate. Okay, well, you know what? Maybe I can get you a different rate. Are you willing to do this, this, and this? Because you maybe can get that rate if you do these three things, you know, are willing to work a night shift in a, maybe a market that you didn't want to work in, you know, uh, at a time frame you didn't want to work. You know what I mean? Like there are always trade-offs. So that's kind of where, the relationship comes in. It's like, what's more important to you? Like, is it that number that you have in mind or is it like, right. you know, the, the location or the timing or, or all those other things? You know, I think that's, that's really where the relationship is built. We kind of look at objections or, or, you know, feedback as an opportunity to build a better relationship. You know, 
it's very rare that we have a conversation where like got the perfect job for you and that first one is like the one that somebody yeah. ends up like taking like, yeah, right. it happens, yeah. of course right. but like you know generally speaking we have to have some iterations of like presenting opportunities you know we, we typically want to submit somebody to a couple different opportunities to give them options you know yeah. really it's like going back to that college advisor thing like do you right. only apply to harvard i mean you could but what if you don't get in now what you know what are your options now so like the advisor should say, look, we can go for a reach school or a reach assignment or whatever else, but like, let's have some other options. Like, let's make sure that state school has that offer for you too, in case you decide to go there. And like, that's still a, a great thing and, and really can advance somebody's, you know, career and allow them to continue to do what they want to do. So, you know, I think that's kind of how we typically handle those expectations. And okay. I think, you know, the, the nurses that, that do, you know, that do end up being good fits for us, like they're receptive and, it's a, it's a, you know, two way street. And frankly, the ones that kind of are rude or blow up about it, like those are the ones that we have the red flags. And I'm like, maybe this person isn't the right person for us. And that's okay. Like, I hope sure. they can find the right fit for them, but it's probably not the right fit for us. It can go both ways. Okay. Yeah. We get through three other rapid fire questions here coming in fast and furious. Sandra says, I'm new to travel nursing, waiting for my first assignment. Uh, when a nurse requests to submit to an assignment, does the recruiter just send in the resume and you just hope that the cost that the hospital calls you? Maybe you guys could touch on that very briefly in terms of how that dynamic happens. Yeah, I mean, every 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 facility is different, you know, and that's okay. part of the setting the expectations like the recruiter should say, hey, this is typically how it goes at this facility. You know, this is their typical process. You know, in some cases, you know, typically we would create a, a submission packet, send it to the client. You know, in COVID times, they're like automatic offer. Like as long as they meet these four criteria, like the person we need them, like they can come in. You know, um, oftentimes it's okay. We're going to submit that to the to to the unit manager. The unit manager is going to review it. Sometimes they may want to set up an interview. Sometimes there's interviews that are done virtually. You know, every facility has a, a different um, process in yeah. terms of how they like to interview and, and onboard folks, and that's really where the relationship comes in with the recruiter or the, or the expectation setting, I guess, as I was referring to is like, hey, if I send me to this facility, here's kind of what you should expect. Here's their typical turnaround time. Yeah. Here's how long it starts for somebody from submission date to typical start date and all those things. Well, and that's just kind of, you know, frankly, to me, uh, staffing 101, right? Setting expectations, communications, here's the process, here's what to expect. It shouldn't just be a guessing game, right? A good recruiter, to your point, should be explaining the process for whatever facility that they're submitting to so that the nurse, the nurse isn't surprised. Um, so Gina asks, so if one does not have the relationship with their recruiter that Kenny outlined, how difficult slash realistic is it to find a new recruiter? This could be a whole other virtual session, right? That we probably don't have time for, but, but what, what is the, um, you know, you're not having a good experience. Sounds like, hey, don't stick with that particular person. Or in fact, that agency, it's it's time to move on. Any advice there, guys? My first advice would be, you know, if it's somebody that you feel like there's possibility to like discuss that, you know, be transparent with them. Like, okay. hey, this is what I'm looking for. This is what's been provided. Like, is it realistic to expect this or, or not? You know, and I think having that transparent relationship with that person is is my would be my first suggestion um you know beyond that you know if you like the company or think the company has offerings that maybe just a bad relationship fit i mean not all people are meant to work together like that's okay like that isn't necessarily a bad thing so yeah you know, i'd say in that transparent conversation it's like look this is what i'm looking for if you don't think that's realistic like maybe there's somebody else in your company that you know might be able to help me there's always every, any business you go to will have contact pages that you can contact and every company will have their own process but i assure you that Anybody in a position like Earl or myself gets that, you know, we'll we'll ensure that the you know the nurse gets addressed and and at least diagnoses the issue and see if the relationship is repairable or if truly a better fit can happen. And if not, you know, there are no shortage of agencies in what we do. A simple Google search will pull up many of them, and you can reach out to others to test the waters if you truly feel that way. Um, but you know, those would be kind of my steps. It is an interesting point you just make, though, that that you may like the agency, not necessarily the person you're working with. And it's OK to seek somebody else out in that agency that may be a better fit for you. Right. Yeah. 
and generally if you're feeling it the recruiter probably feels the same way you know like okay. how many times has somebody been in a bad relationship or both one certain person's like this is the best relationship ever and somebody's like terrible relationship i mean generally both parties kind of have a sense right. of things are going well or not like the recruiter probably shouldn't be surprised by the feedback you know okay. that that's provided okay um so christina is kind of clarifying something earlier we were talking about you know a perfect dream fit, if you will, as a former nurse that is a recruiter. Christina says, I think the, for me, the question was answered when it was said that recruiters get training to understand our lingo. That wasn't the case with my last recruiter. So it sounds like, you know, Earl, to your earlier point, um, you don't have to be, you know, perfect recruiter is not, is not necessarily an ex-nurse, but they should be trained uh, in the process, the language and so forth, and have kind of clinical backup, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Right. And to dovetail on to what Kenny was saying, right, this is a professional relationship. You should uh, make your professional expectations known and manage the relationship as you do with other relationships in your life. Right. If uh, if someone's not meeting your expectations, right, it is appropriate. And uh, and uh, and, uh, you know, we deal with this all the time about you asking to say, hey, listen, can I speak to your supervisor right uh, in the company? Uh, and then explain and have them work through possibly reassigning you to someone else who meets your expectation, uh, right? But there's some thoughtfulness there where you sort of think about what, so what was wrong here, right? What uh, what were my expectations, right? And sort of what wasn't met um, in those things, right? And often uh, the, the company is willing to, um, to work with you, right? Uh, uh, all relationships are investments, uh, guys, right? And so the most fruitful ones are, are certainly not you taking, um, you know, uh, how it's gone wrong, uh, uh, you know, at the heart and not sharing it, uh, right? If you share it, you likely enrich that conversation in a way um, uh, that matters, right? Uh, in terms of the training, the lingo, right? So you're talking about people on a spectrum, right? How many of you talked to patients and you told them all of the ways their treatment plan was about to unfold and two minutes, uh, two hours later, right? They're phoning the doctor with this or you with the same questions over again, uh, right? So uh, training happens not linearly, but in fact, um, right on a, on a different curve. And so, um, so right, uh, you, you could expect the same thing at recruiters, right? People are at different levels of uh, understanding and um, that's how that goes. Yeah. And that's a good point, I'll just to piggyback is like, a good recruiter might say, hey, that's a great clinical question. I, I actually don't know the answer, but let me call Earl and sure. Earl will help enlighten me. Now I'll know for the future, but like, you know, not trying to just be like, yeah, yeah, no problem. You got, you know, or trying to like brush it off, but really like saying, okay, I hear your question. I'm not the right person to answer it. Either right. let me find it or get you in touch with the right person to answer it. You know, I think that's what you really want. Like a recruiter is your facilitator. You know, they don't need to be your clini clinical resource. They just need to facilitate the relationship yeah. with the clinical resource or the compliance resource or the accounting resource or whatever else it is that you're looking for on that specific time. You know, and I think that's why we really harped on the relationship pieces because if you can trust that person to get you to where you need to be regardless of what it is, then it's going to be generally speaking successful for all. Yeah. Well, and I'll, I'll close it out with this. You know, Gina said, Kenny hit the nail on the head, transparency. And it seems like so much of what you guys are talking about really truly is that the transparency in that relationship, being upfront, being honest in that way, you know, setting the uh, setting the proper expectations. Guys, we're going to close it out here in about 30 seconds. But I'm wondering if you could just in, in terms of wrapping it up, um, you, you know, you and your organizations are members of NATO. Um, can you tell folks, you, you touched on it earlier, but just to close it out, how can travel nurses use NATO as a resource? So our, our, NATO can be used as a resource in terms of grievances and those sorts of things, correct? And there is some information for travel nurses uh, that are available to help them in their journey through NATO, correct? Yes, so so absolutely right. So so, so NATO is uh, does a couple of things, right? It helps provide the best practices to staffing companies who may not understand how to answer certain questions. Uh, so in that sense, we're sort of the gold standard, the beacon to be followed, 
Uh, so we spend a lot of time working with other travel companies, right, to, to set that gold standard, right? What, what do we think consensus is, right? Because as you know, if you, put a, if you put 10 experts in a room, right, you have to eventually reach consensus on what the answer is uh, to questions, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, I would invite you all to, to visit the website and you can take a look at all of the resources, all of the work that happens there. There's a lot of uh, committee yeah. work and that sort of thing. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, lobbying to the governmental agencies around, uh, you know, what is the opinion of travel? nursing uh, and then again right a lot of level setting across um, travel agencies um, right that there, there's something like 50 or 60 travel agencies as part of NATO you can see those on the website um, and we reach consensus on what is the gold standard philosophy around credentialing items around uh, you know issue resolutions uh, right, right ethics and morals within the industry right so uh, so we're sort of uh, police for that and those sorts of things right and so uh, please do go visit the website you check yep. those things out perfect perfect guys thank you so much we had great audience participation I think everybody's very appreciative in terms of the the overview that you uh, provided and the questions that you answered uh, and from the gypsy nurse perspective we really appreciate you guys taking the time we know you're very busy you're working with fantastic organizations that have a lot going on but you've taken uh, none of you realizes you've took some time over the past few months to prepare for this and and put the presentation together and like that so we knew it took a bunch of time and we really appreciate it guys so thank you for providing Providing, uh, your time to the community. We appreciate it. We'd love to have you back again. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you guys for having us. Thank you, Kenny. Thank you, Earl. We appreciate it. All right. We have one more session to go. That one was great. And thank you, everybody, that were in the comments asking questions. Um, we really love all of your support. Um, we're so happy that the conference could be, um, you know, a use to all of you. So thank you guys so much. There's a lot of people that have been in here every day. So yes. um, some familiar names. So thank you so much for attending. Um, we have one more at 7 p.m. This will be yoga. So we're going to learn to relax. I think we could both use some yoga, Rachel, right? Just kind of that breathing yeah. technique. And we've both Definitely. been sitting a lot so we can kind of, you know, stretch out, get some exercise and those sorts definitely. of things. So <laughs> definitely, <laughs> definitely. Good so be sure to tune in and then, um, yeah, thank you guys so much and we'll see you then. See you at seven o'clock.